Before we start Mass, my name's uh, Father Tony Fortman, and I will be helping here. I will be serving, administering the sacraments, preaching, and teaching. And so I'm blessed to be here with all of you. I, as, a, as again, my, my name's Father Tony Fortman, and I'm from Ottawa. I'm from Ottawa, Ohio, about 20 miles north of Lima and 20 miles 20 miles west of Finley. So thank you for allowing me to be here and worship with worshiping with you and praising Jesus with you. And let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father the love of the resurrected Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In today's gospel, we'll see Jesus tell us, come to me, all you who labor and find life burdensome, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we come to the Lord this day and ask for his healing and strength. It doesn't mean we're weak. It doesn't mean we're weak if we draw close to God. Jesus is not a crutch, but he's the source of our salvation and our hope. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, you were born of the Virgin. Christ eleison. Christ Jesus, you are Emmanuel, God is with us. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Or, Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. 
Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, we have God the Father, man. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a coal, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of God does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. May the Lord be on your heart and on your lips so that you may worthily profess the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, today Jesus, he talks to us and tells us to come to him. And you know, in this life, at times we, we might be worried about what other people think of us. And I believe it, one has to take that time to wonder how people see us and how we're portrayed to others. But Sometimes we're too preoccupied with how other people see us, or we may be too worried about that. That was the problem with Saul. Remember Saul, the, the first king of Israel? He was always worried about how he was portrayed in front of other people. 
fact, he was jealous of David. He was jealous of David who took his spot. All them spears, all them spears he tried, tried to throw at David. You know, Saul killed thousands and David killed ten thousands. You know, that worrying about what other people think. And that's, that's what Saul, that he was preoccupied with that. And if we're honest with ourselves, you and I too, we wonder how people think of us. But the only thing that really matters is what Jesus thinks of us. You know, what he thinks, how he sees us. Because, because in reality, who's going to be there at our deathbed? Who's going to be there at our deathbed? People are slowly taking away from us. People are slowly being taken away from us. Parents, maybe your child. And who's going to be there at the end of your life? Jesus will be. And so a preoccupation of how other people, how worrying about what other people think about us is something there that's it's Padre Pio says, pray, hope, and don't worry. Pray, hope, and don't worry. Today's readings, we hear from Paul. He tells us in the second reading, do not live by the flesh. Later on, he says, the flesh is of no avail. You know, live in the spirit. And you know, I, I see in my own life, and it's very hard. I'm going to tell you, it's it just as, I'm going to be, be honest with you, as a Catholic priest, it's so easy for me to be a CEO, a business manager, because I can get work done. And people pat me on the back. I'm appreciated by all the work that I do. And it looks like I got it all together. You know, it's a temptation. And, it, and if we're honest, it's a temptation for us all. But I have found, I have found that when you can have a self-disciplined prayer life, I have found when, you, when you're self-disciplined, now you may say, Father, I, I do have a self-disciplined prayer life, but I know, I know it goes astray. I know it goes astray because you're a human being. And you've got the devil tempting you not to stick with praying your rosary or the liturgy of the hours or the Divine Mercy Chaplet. You have that temptation. I have that temptation. And I haven't, I, every day is a new day. But I have found if you're self-disciplined in your prayer life, when Paul talks about this not living by the flesh, you can't do that without a prayer life. In fact, I, I can tell you this, that with lust, the only thing that I, you can go to a counselor, but that's not the full package. The one thing, that main ingredient is the rosary. The most pure heart of Mary will help you keep your heart pure. And I found when you have a self-disciplined prayer life, that carries to other aspects of your life. But if that goes, I, I see it when it comes to your health, your physical health, it, a lot of things. In your, your married life, and I gotta tell you, you know, the other day I was listening to Johnette Benkovic, Johnette Williams, Women of Grace, it's her 20th anniversary. I'm going on to the pilgrimage to Guadalupe, Mexico with Johnette Binkovic, and she's got three buses going. And, I, and she, she talks about this in her life, Johnette Binkovic. She has said, she, going to Mass on Sunday, that's expected, but she tried to incorporate a prayer life with her husband. It, maybe reading a paragraph a day from the scriptures. And her husband told her, Johnette, if it's going to be a competition between me and Jesus, I'm gone. 
if it's going to be a competition with me and Jesus, I'm gone. And, and, and how I see how at times, you know, husbands and wives, we can, we can be harsh. We can be each other's slave driver. We can be slave drivers to our own spouse. We can be slave drivers to ourselves. I'm German. Well, I'm half German. And it, 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 you know, the thinking is if, if, if you're going to do anything, you, you got to do it perfect. Well, G.K. Chesterton said, if anything's worth doing, it's worth doing imperfectly. Because if you think you got to do it perfect, you'll never do it because you're afraid. You know how at times, brothers and sisters, we come to the Lord where we're at and we give permission to our spouse and our husband to take these mini vacations during the day. You don't have to go to Myrtle Beach. You know, these time for prayer each day. And I have found when we, when we have that self-discipline, that carries over into our thinking that carries over to a lot of things. Our interaction with each other, our families. And so Jesus tells us today, come to me in his word. The eternal word is not a something, but a somebody. The eternal word of Jesus. Okay, come to him. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you're a, a Bible thumper or a Bible smoocher. It doesn't mean you're weak by coming to the Lord. It means you're being honest. And when, when people don't let you do that, they want to be God. Maybe your spouse wants to be God. They got an agenda. We have responsibilities, I know that. But we have to take time for the Lord. You'll never make it in being a disciple. You'll start making stuff up yourself. If, if we don't spend time with the Lord, we're going to start making this stuff up. And actually, spouses get tired of each other's thinking. You know what each other are thinking. But by letting God in the center of your marriage, that's neutral ground. Then That opens up a whole new world. Opens up challenges, too. You know, so Jesus says, come to me in the Word, in His body and blood, His flesh, not a symbol, the real thing. Come to me, and I will give you rest. You don't have to be tough. You don't have to, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. Only to Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He's the one. He's the one worth following. He's the one you need to impress. Please stand for the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God is not made substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was born the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With humble trust in our loving Father, we bring to him our needs and petitions. For the church, may God help us in being meek and humble warriors for Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lead governments and communities, may the Lord grant them wisdom in serving their people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who battle addiction and substance abuse, may the Holy Spirit grant them strength and fortitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the love of Jesus inspire us in taking up his yoke, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the poor souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one else to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Matt and Alicia Glenn family for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the evil of pornography and human trafficking, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts and those written in our book of St. Monica. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, kindly look with favor upon the needs of your children brought to you in the name of Jesus, your Son, Amen. Oh, thank you, dear Deacon Rusty. Okay. Living water 
thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus, and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my soul revived, and now I live in Him. I heard the voice of Jesus say, I am this dark world's light. Look unto me, thy shall rise, and all thy day be bright. Look to Jesus, and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this morning to offer, fruit of the vine and earth of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his Lord. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who, <clears throat> and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death <coughs> Lord until you come again therefore Holy Father as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your son our Savior whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. 
Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters, our family members and parishioners who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Teresa the Little Flower, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace be with us. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you there. Peace be with you there. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you there. Do you sanitize your hands or not? I don't, but okay. Okay. of the world. 
Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. If I could have Quentin Kanya come forward. Quentin is one of our masters of ceremonies, and this fall he's going to attend the University of Cincinnati to major in mechanical engineering. But Quentin, on behalf of Father Tony, Father Angelo, myself, and all the parishioners of Emmanuel, thank you for your faithful and generous service as a master of ceremonies for so many years. And I want to invite you to go to Father Angelo's Thanksgiving party at Holy Trinity there at the KFC Hall. It starts at 1 o'clock to about 3, but I imagine there'll be people there longer than 3 o'clock. And Father Angelo, he, uh, I met him first in 1993. He was a vocation director, and he, he got me into the Precious Blood community. And I thought, this is a good man. He's a good, faithful priest and a hard worker, too. And so I've always looked up to him, and he's been, he's been somewhat of a, a mentor to me also over the years. And he's a, he's a good man worth following. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. First verse is going to be in German. This is a phonetic spelling from the time. Oh, wow. We're a German parish. Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything about Germans. <laughs> Thank you.